Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Uh, thank you for visiting my channel, and if you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. If you're new and you like what you hear, please press the bell and you will receive updates, periodic updates, if you click it once. And I think if you press it twice, you get all the updates every time I post a video. Anyway, I tend to um, post videos when something comes of interest. Sometimes that could be once a day, sometimes it could be three times a day, sometimes it can be once a week, it varies. But I don't like to push and force subjects if there's nothing of real interest. Anyway, today I thought this topic was interesting. Um, it's been covered in um, in another video, but under a different guise. And this is about the students, the international students. Now, as we know, the country depends on the income from student visas. They pay a hell of a lot on a tier four visa. But what's happened with the home office, because they can't cope with the backlog, is that they've outsourced the tier four visa application for students to a company. Um, what was its name? Sierra, um, let me see, Sopra Steria. Um, I don't think they have a very good reputation because I understand that um, they made some serious mistakes a couple of years ago and they were under scrutiny. Anyway, the Home Office has deemed it fit to choose them for this particular task. In this particular task, what they're doing is they are supposed to be issuing visas. But what's happening is, is that there's no free appointments. So in order for the students who've already paid for the course, so they pay their visa fee, they pay for the course, and then they just need to get the visa. I think it's a bit back to front. I think maybe if they were paying for the visa first, but they can't do that because they need to prove that they've got the paid for the visa. They paid for the course in order to get the visa. So they fork out thousands for the course. Then they have to sort out the visa application. And what's happened is, is because they've already paid it, they're more or less compelled to pursue it. And what's happening is, is that with this um, company, Stereo, I'll just call them, Supra Stereo, um, they're charging um, premium rates to get your application done quickly. Now, there doesn't seem to be any free appointments, according to this article I read. So these students, on top of paying 475 for the visa, 300 and something for the NHS um, health surcharge or the immigration health surcharge, they happen to fork out 100 to 200 to... Um, get this to make an appointment just an appointment to have their um, biometrics done in their fingerprints and it really is quite unfair i mean i don't understand why anybody would have to pay for that kind of service when you've already paid for the visa and you've already paid for your flight where because you, you're international students so you've already forked out for that. And now you're, you're kind of caught in a hard place, a rock in a hard place, because you cannot proceed without the application. And a lot of people, they're kind of scared to try and wait to see if there are any cancellations, just in case they don't get a cancellation. And then it's too late for them to get um, their biometrics done. So they end up forking out that extra 100 or 200 quid. I think it's really unfortunate and I think it's a real exploitation of the system and it's taking advantage of those people who are not in a position to back down because they've already forked out a lot of money. I mean, you know, we we find ourselves in those situations all the time where we've bought something and, you know, in order to get it through, yeah, say, for example, I had a item that I bought from America. So I paid for the item and now they add customs charge. Now, I can either say I'm not going to pay um, £15 customs charge. But then I think to myself, I've already paid for the item. So I'm forced to pay the customs charge. 
So it's a similar situation with these people. They've already paid for their flights. They've already paid, for, well, they can't pay for their flights, but they've already paid for the course and they've already paid for the visa. So to make the appointment now, it's they're forced to pay that as well if they want that peace of mind. Anyway, now, as usual, I'll read out the facts. I just always give you a... Um, my own opinion and my own thoughts and then I read it out from the article that I've taken it from. So if you interested in knowing the facts, we never know if it's the facts anyway, but you know it's come from authentic um, newspaper. Okay, Stop for Steria claims it is working with the Home Office and UK visa and admin and an, uh, and immigration to deliver the tier four application service for overseas students. International students and staff of British universities, what's wrong with me today? And British universities are facing unacceptable difficulties and costs in applying for visas after parts of the application process were outsourced to a company charging up to £200 for appointments. Now, it looks as though it's not the whole process that they've outsourced. It looks as though it's just the biometric aspect of it. So, that obviously, the, the money will go to the Home Office for the applications, and they'll process that part, and then they forward that on to Sopra um, Steria, and at that point, they intervene to do the biometrics. Um, and that's what these people are paying for, because without the biometrics, they can't get their visa. Universities say that the system run by the French IT services company Sopra Steria is already struggling to cope with the numbers renewing their student visas within the UK and fear that it will be chaotic in September when more than 40,000 students are expected to use it. Now you have to ask yourself, 40,000 students, if they, get, if they get wind of this, they're not going to want to go through this process year after year so i don't know what that's going to do because when you think that their income is helping the economy i mean they might not want them in the country but they need their money to help them with the economy so you, you, you know they're putting in these obstacles and the obstacles are not doing them any favors so despite constructive engagement between the home office uk visas and immigration and universities the current capacity and level of service being offered by Sopra remains unacceptable, said Alistair Jarvis, the chief executive of Universities UK. Students and universities cannot be expected to pay to address Sopra broken system. We are calling on Sopra to fully address these concerns before the September surge of students so that students can start their courses with the visas they need. Because this affects all the universities as well. So you're not just penalising students by making things difficult and making sure people do what they're supposed to do, but you're also jeopardising the university because they have to employ um, the, stu the, the tutors for that period so they need the money coming in and if the money is not coming in because of the visas or they're going to have to refund because the visas have not come through they're in a sticky situation um, until March applicants were able to that's until March 2019 a couple of months ago applicants were able to use a service provided through post office to check documents and provide biometric information, such as photographs. But since then, they must now book appointments through Soprasteria run centres around the UK or pay extra for appointments in other cities. I don't know why they, if it ain't broke, why they've got to try and fix it. It's really annoying. What was wrong with going through the post offices and getting them to check the documents? Universities UK, which represents more than 130 
British higher education institutions, has received a stream of complaints about Soprasteria from its members and from students unable to book free appointments required to scan documents and take fingerprints. Soprasteria offers enhanced appointments at its main offices for extra fees, including next day or emergency appointment from £100 to £200. Appointments can be made online or through the company's phone line, which costs £2.50 a minute. The company's website also offers appointments at Premium Lounge in the City of London starting at £200 for customers who desire a service with added comfort and privacy. People don't want added comfort and privacy, they just want their bloody visa. Pay £200 for that. And they're probably in and out in five minutes. Once they get in, you know, you have all that hanging around. I mean, one guy said he had an appointment, a timed appointment, and he still had to wait an hour after paying these premium fees. So it's not like they're treated like royalty just because they're paying extra. They're not. These costs are on top of the £475 that international students typically pay for a Tier 4 visa application and £300 a year surcharge for the use of the NHS. Alisa Calgagni, a student from Chile studying for a doctorate at the University of Cambridge, this bloody fly, said I was required to enrol my biometrics through Sopra Steria. I had not expected any additional charges, but I found it virtually impossible to find a free appointment. The time window for bookings on the online system only covers two weeks and there were no free appointments available or any appointments at all in Cambridge. Now, I think that's unfair. Not only do they have to pay all this money, but they only have two weeks to make that appointment with Soprasteria. So they're forcing them, really, if they're saying there's no free appointments, to pay the money, to pay the extra 100 or £200. Pounds. I understand in Manchester and Birmingham, though, you're able to get free appointments, but, boy, that's a long... That's far to travel. I called the Soprasteria of support line and they suggested to keep checking the website for cancelled appointments. I didn't want the uncertainty of constantly checking the system with no guarantee of an appointment becoming available. So I, I elected to pay £100 for an appointment in Croydon, two hours away. Despite booking a timed appointment, there was a waiting time of one hour and then the system wasn't working properly, leading to further delays. So she's not a happy camper. Free appointments are said to be between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. at the company's core centres in Birmingham, Belfast, Cardiff, Croydon and in South London. Glasgow and Manchester. Oh yeah, Glasgow and Manchester. Yeah, I think Birmingham and Manchester, it's easier to get free appointments. But there again, you know, it is a, quite a distance to travel. In some other cities, enhanced service points offer appointments for £60 to £125, in many cases located in public libraries. As a result, some students are paying to fast-track their appointments and travelling to one of Sopra Stereo Centres, often many miles from where they live, Universities UK said. Diane Abbott, the Shadow Home Secretary, said the shoddy service was the wrong way to treat students making significant educational and financial contributions to the UK, while other countries are falling over themselves to attract international students. This Tory government continues to subject them to a hostile environment, Abbott said. Sopra Stereo are yet another private contractor like G4S and Serco given millions in public funds by the Home Office and providing a shoddy service. You know, it's really a shame that all this money comes from us, all these millions. I mean, did you hear about Boris Johnson? He's using millions for his new um, campaign. I'm just like, you know, people, homeless people, starving people at food banks, and yet you can spend millions on a campaign. 
That's what I mean. When people have money, they have no concept of the poor. They have no concept whatsoever of the working class and how they live. Because things tick over. Things keep ticking over. They, have no, they haven't got a clue. And that's why when Trump closed down the federal government, he thought, oh yeah, get rid of them, close them down, nothing, it won't make a difference, we don't need them. But when he found out that the people on the ground effect started affecting airports, it started affecting a wider, I don't think people realise the value of administrative support staff. I don't think they do. And the people on the ground... But this is, this is another example where they feel it's okay to spend millions on a campaign while people are in um, using food banks on the streets and all sorts. Anyway, I've gone off the point there. Um, a spokesperson, okay. Foreign students who stay to work in the UK pay 3.2 billion in taxes. Wow. I didn't even know that. 3.2 billion. That's how much the UK gets for foreign students. So when you see all these foreigners walking around, don't just assume they're illegal immigrants. They could be foreign students who have paid their way to come in. They've paid for the NHS. They've also paid for this appointment and they're paying taxes. They're allowed to work, I think, under 30 hours. I forget how many hours they're allowed to work. But whatever it is, they pay taxes as well. So don't assume that every person of colour is an illegal immigrant. A spokesperson for the company said Sopra Steria is working closely with the Home Office, universities and higher education institutions across the UK to deliver the Tier 4 visa application service. This is tailored to each institution's needs to provide greater student convenience and choice. Well, the feedback doesn't support that statement, does it? It definitely doesn't support that statement. We are focused on adapting the service to respond to areas of greatest demand and our increasing capacity where needed. The thing is, they're not on the receiving end of the problem. They have people all over the place. And it's like I called... Um, I was calling to make a GP appointment. This is just an example of people at the top not understanding what the little people have to go through. I was making an appointment yesterday to see my GP. They asked me to make the appointment, you know, for a regular checkup. And I waited over, okay, I called at quarter to 11 and there were seven people in front of me. At 12.15, there was one person in front of me. And would you believe, but from 12.15 to 1.10, I didn't get through until 1.13, with one person in front of me. Now, I don't know what those people are doing. I mean, people who answer the phone are not medical people. They're, they're receptionists and whatever. They're not allowed to give out medical advice. I, I went through the appointment line. So what the hell could be could they be doing for me to be waiting over an hour when there's only one person in front of me? And the thing about that is that you go through the first five and they go relatively quickly. So you kind of keep holding and holding, just thinking, OK, I've only got one person in front of me. It has to be soon. But it's that same thing. You know, we have to go. We feel the effects of when these people are using machines or whatever they're doing, we feel the effects of, of um, the bad service. And it's so annoying. I mean, I was nearly pulling my hair out. While I was waiting, I was sending a complaint letter. I mean, I love complaining. <laughs> but anyway, um, I got my appointment in the end. Um, yes, yeah, so... We are focused on adapting the service to respond to areas of greatest demand and increased capacity where needed. And that's why I said that, because they haven't got a clue where the greatest demand is. Otherwise, my GP would have had more receptionists or, or they would have them limiting calls to, say, five or ten minutes. How long are you supposed to be speaking to a person? 
I just think they have this system where they, they press a button and it says one call holding and they go about and do something completely different. That's what I think. Other students have also said they couldn't access online appointments administered by Sopristeria. Khalid Ekahedji, a student at the University of Southampton who uses a screen reader to read on-screen text aloud, because he's um, got an eye deficiency, said it could not deal with parts of the online application. This is not a problem that I faced with other websites and it meant I was not able to log in without the assistance of a sighted person. So he doesn't have that problem with other websites, but obviously the one that Sopristeria is using is inadequate, it's substandard. But they charge all those millions to, 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 to do the job. I've explained my concerns with the accessibility of the service to stop for stereo, and I believe it is a relatively simple issue to fix. However, I have not had any further updates from stop for stereo, and there has been no confirmation that their website is inclusive and accessible to everyone. After eventually logging on, Al Kahreji found that there were no appointments available in Southampton and obtained one only after his university intervened. So it's, it's like, you know, they have this system and then you, ha you have to go higher up for, to get a service. I mean, that is ridiculous. They, there should not have to be a university official to intervene in order for that guy to get his visa application sorted out. That proves that they're sitting on stuff and they're not processing things properly. Otherwise, that wouldn't happen. They wouldn't be able to fast track it. In 2017, Sopristeria came under fire for its involvement in NHS shared business services, a venture it co-owned with the Department of Health, after the Guardian revealed that more than 500,000 pieces of sensitive, sensitive medical correspondence handled by SBS had gone missing. So you see, these are the people who are looking after your stuff and processing your applications. 500,000 pieces of confidential material have gone missing. We don't know much more about that. But anyway, I thought I'd share that information with you to who it may apply. I hope you find it helpful.